the thing about social media and and uh, kind of trying to uh, map out a space for yourself in the in the world that people know of, unless you're one of those like pundits or you know, somebody's political analyst or somebody's cultural analyst on CNN or whatever, you really have to leave the hands-on work to be in the public square. And the thing about me, I've, I've been doing public square ministry with Cross Movement. I did that for 14 years. And it was dope because I got to fly over and just drop bombs on people and rock a show. And yo, I'll see you at the conference next year. But when Cross Movement ended, I went into the classroom and I realized, I'm like, yo, we've been flying over dropping bombs on people, but there's no infantry. There's no foot soldiers going in being that daily I'm seeing this kid every day and I'm getting a chance to drum away at this idea. There's very few of us doing that. And so I really kind of had to make a decision a couple years ago. Do I want to do something that's going to allow me to fly over? You know, be the name that you know of. Be the person that's being thrown in and, you know, or do I want to be the guy that's on the ground day to day? So I'm not in the public square with a lot of stuff because I feel like right now I just like being touchable, being tangible to the students, to the people that I'm working with in the community. Um, part of me really wants to, because I feel like what I'm saying needs to be in the public square. But the more I try to plot to do that kind of stuff, the more it takes me away from being hands-on. So um, I'm actually working on something right now. It, I'm not sure if it'll be out by the time y'all air this or not. Me and uh, Timothy Welbeck, who used to be known as uh, Red Baron, he's a professor of hip-hop uh, and black culture at Temple University. So he and I are about to do a, 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 what do you call it, a vlog cast, I guess, a video blog cast with American Bible Society, where we're going to start bringing in, bringing issues into the public square. That'll be my, my foray into uh, public uh, conversation, but most of my, my effort right now is just being on the ground, being hands-on. Nah, in God's timing, it just made perfect sense. When cross movement ended, I was so weary, <laughs> so tired, so... And then, you know, Reach was doing what they were doing. It was like, yo, we, we got out the game at the right time. We passed the baton. And it felt like even though we're going to stop, somebody's going to continue. So I didn't miss it. I felt like not good riddance to the public square, but it was a needed reprieve, a needed break from, you know, I remember one Saturday I just was home washing my car, vacuuming out my car. I said, yo, this is what normal people do. It's Saturday and I'm cleaning out my car. Like, I've never done that before. I've never, because on a Saturday, I'm, I'm in somebody's airport, somebody's hotel, somebody's stage. Um, so the transition was a welcomed one. And then, like I said, the added benefit of looking at the same faces every day, saying, how do I reach this person? It just breathed a new sense of purpose um, or a fresh sense of purpose. So now nah, it wasn't difficult at all. I have a few books. Um, the City of Allegory series, I've only done two. It is, there's five books in the series. So the third I've written, I haven't had time to edit it for like the last two years. And people are like, yo, where's the third one at? So I got to edit that. <clears throat> then I've got to write the last two. Uh, should I say this? I have a few books. <laughs> I have a few books. Um, there's one book, you know, as a single dude, I feel like there are things that I can't say until I get married. When I wrote the first book on the death of hip-hop, marriage, and morals, I had, sent, I had married men writing me like, yo, how do you know this? Like, you're not married. How do you know this part about, like, I, I study marriages from the outside. And I, I'm, so one of the things I've, I've been writing about is, like, I'm, as a single dude looking for a wife, I'm always shocked and saddened when I meet Christian women who feel like they've been helped by Steve Harvey's book you know, act like a lady, think like a man. Like, as a Christian woman, how is that helping you? The premise of his book is men used to only marry women because they wanted sex. But since the sexual revolution, women had been much more free with their bodies. You know, think about Beyonce's song, you know what I mean? Um, ego, you know what I mean? You want the keys to my heart, but you ain't gonna get it. I'd rather you open up my body. She's like, I'm gonna throw my body out there just to protect my heart. Women have been much more free with their body and not holding sex till marriage. So now that they're doing that, they need to find new ways to protect themselves since they're not letting marriage do it anymore. And Steve is not lamenting that fact. He's just like, yo, since the game has changed, you need to know how men are playing now. 
So, and so he has all these quote unquote suggestions. Have a 90 day rule. No sex for the first 90 days. As if a dude can't play you for 90 days and still get what he wants and bounce. Um, wait till he says, I love you. Like all these ideas about how to still get the commitment of a ring without the ring. And it's like, and I'm, I'm meeting quote unquote Christian women who were like, thank you, Steve. I didn't know that. Like, first of all, what not? So there, there's, there's tons of ideas that he believes are helpful to women on how to meet men on an even playing field since marriage is out of the picture. I see the same problem. Marriage is out of the picture, sex is in, how do we, but the, the response and the remedy that he has is unbiblical. It's not coming from a godly perspective. Um, yeah, so for those who don't know, I'm not re recommending that you read it. If you have been helped by it, um, just know that there's more help. God has more help than what Steve is giving. And um, just because you see him at the Stellars don't mean he's got God's perspective. And I forgot who said it yesterday. Somebody said, you know, nature abhors a vacuum. So whenever there's something that's missing, something's going to fill it. And it's going to seem perfect until something better comes along. So I'm like, if there's nothing that's really helping uh, single women, especially Christian single women uh, who live in the urban context, I've got so many ideas and things I've been putting together. And I'm scared to write this book because I feel like as I'm, you know, as a single dude, how am I, like, what am I trying to do? Program my wife before I meet her? Like, like that ain't what I'm trying to do. I'm, I want to help, you know, a lot of these women, but um, I feel like I can't really do this book right until, I, until I'm married, but I'm so burdened and I'm always writing in it. Um, so there's that. There's a few other sociological books I have planned. Um, once again, these are all just long passes. I'm writing them now when they come out. You know, books take off 10, 20 years after they've been written. You know what I mean? Books like The Help have been out for years. And, uh, you know, they make a movie and all of a sudden, you know, bestseller kind of stuff. So, pen is always working. Mind is always working. Heart is always working. Um, in God's timing, you'll get, you know, more, more stuff from it.